contacted by not one, but two of the companies that I reached out to. Exclusive versions of the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Let's go ahead and start with the exciting part. How's it going everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny, and welcome back to episode two of Pimp My Knife, this mini series where I am modifying to the max, not one, but two exclusive Spyderco paramilitary twos. If you haven't seen episode one yet, I don't know what you're doing because we actually created this monster called the Blood Money PM2. It was absolutely fantastic, had a lot of fun doing it. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to link it right there. So go ahead and make sure to click on that and watch that first. I do want to do a special shout out and thank you to Rockscale Designs for making this possible because not only are we primarily using parts from them, but they did go ahead and supply the scales for this build. So thank you to Rockscale Designs for helping make this possible. And without further hesitation, let's go ahead and pimp my knife. <laughs> Welcome in everybody. I'm I'm super stoked and I'm stoked because this is episode two, part two of Pimp My Knife, a two part mini series that I'm doing. And you know what? I don't know. I might end up doing more. It depends on how well people end up liking this mini series where I'm going to modify some knives. And in this mini series, we're modifying some exclusive Spider Co paramilitary twos. The first one was the DLT exclusive in Crewware. This one is a little bit different because it's the Blade Ops exclusive PM2 in LMAX the, with the Emerson Wave built in. That's absolutely bananas. I don't think I've ever seen this variant before. They've probably made it, um, but this is the first time that I saw it. So I had to get in on it. And the first thought in my mind when I saw the pre-order for this was, man, I've got to modify it. No way, no doubt, nowhere am I not going to slap some mods on there. And for those of you who don't know, Spider Co's are, are really awesome, not only because they have great fit and finish from the factory, but because they're so popular, you can find a ton of aftermarket modifications that don't require specialized custom work that is stupidly expensive. That's not to say that you won't spend a pretty penny, modifying your spider co um, but it just means that there are readily made available options out there and today we're going to be doing four modifications to it it's going to include a clip from lynch northwest it will also include a backspacer from rock scale designs purple anodized titanium screws from rock scale designs and then the heart of the build which is going to be What's in this box? These are titanium aluminum, uh, titanium aluminum blasted critter scales. And I think it's going to look absolutely killer. Um, shout out, by the way, to Rock Scale Design for supplying these scales. Now, when I was thinking of this build, when I was dreaming up this build in my head, I originally reached out to uh, two scale makers. I reached out to Rock Scale and I reached out to Sharp Dressed Knives. I, I did not expect both of them to get back to me with so much enthusiasm, but also shout out to Rock Scale because even though I didn't ask for it, they also supplied a titanium backspacer and two different screw sets as well. So we might end up having to play around with a bunch of different variations. I purchased this, this, and this and then this was supplied by rock scale so all of this stuff is readily available i don't have affiliate links for any of it but if you want any of this stuff including the knife this one is limited blade ops did tell me that they only have about 50 spares so if you decide that you want one of these or if you want to modify one of these 
definitely hop on that. Um, the backspacer from Rock Scale, the clip from Lynch Northwest, and then the scales from Rock Scale are all available. So they will fit on other PM2s, not just this one. If you want to use those, if you want to buy those, uh, the links will be down in the description. Go ahead and uh, take a shot at it. First things first is we actually have to tear this brand new knife down and then also build it back up with our awesome modifications. And I'm gonna have that in a separate video, but guys, if you wanna watch the tear down and build up of this mod build, I'm calling it the rock scale build because that is most of the parts, uh, make sure to click on that link up above. And other than that, we are going to change this bad boy in three, two, one, Guys, I could not be more pleased with how this turned out. It I won't call it a complete transformation, but wow. I really feel like this knife came into its own with these modifications. It feels right. This exclusive Blade Ops L Max Emerson PM2 just feels way different than it did in its stock format. And I'm I'm very pleased with this. I think that this looks absolutely fantastic. Now, there is one more thing that we have to talk about, and that is the fact that we have another we have another backspacer. Um, before we talk about this, and I am going to show different configurations with this backspacer because I definitely think that this purple is not for everybody. And I do want to address one thing. You might notice that the clip is different than the one that we installed initially. And I'll be honest, it has a lot to do with the fact that at the end of the day, this clip is not the same color purple as the rest of the hardware. It's more of a lavender steel type purple, uh, less of a neon purple. So it didn't really fit. So instead I decided to go ahead and use my extra MXG deep carry clip, which actually does mold well with this knife. Now, there are other clips out there that do appear to match this specific color of purple on the hardware and on the backspacer. And the problem with that is, is that the specific clip that I'm talking about from Rips Garage Tech is like 70 bucks. So the question is, do I really need to go that route? And I don't necessarily think that I do, this MXG deep carry clip is really, really good. And that's going to lead me into talking about the install on here. Um, the interesting thing is that Matt from rock scale design, I've been messaging with him and he said, you know, don't hold back. If you have any critiques on anything that we could improve, you know, please, please, please let us know. We're always trying to improve. And that is fantastic. So I went into this, you know, with an open mind of, hey, you know what? Maybe it's good, but maybe there's some things that they could improve on. And I got to say, um, yeah, Matt, there is not a whole lot of of critique I can offer here. It, it, you know what? Let's talk about these mods. I'll talk about what they cost. And uh, I'll go into why there's not a whole lot of critique that I have for this. First and foremost, we're going to start off with the pocket clip. Now I did go ahead and switch out to an MXG deep carry clip, um, but it's around the same price, if not a little bit cheaper than the Lynch Northwest clip. It's still a titanium American made bent pocket clip. And I got to say, I think MXG does in fact make the best looking bent pocket clip for a Spyderco anything. Um, they do a phenomenal job on it. The spoon shape is nice. It doesn't get in the way of the ergos at all. It's lightweight. It's going to be a little bit lighter than a 3D milled titanium pocket clip. And it's 24, 25 bucks. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's the same clip that we used on our Blood Money PM2 build as well. As you can see, I have a thing for MXG deep carry clips. And I got to say, uh, I'm not disappointed at all. I think that it worked out well. 25 bucks is money well spent on that clip. Moving on, let's talk about the backspacer. And in this, I'm going to talk about the hardware. Now, even if you don't want to buy the scales and the hardware and everything else, if you have a PM2, you really should go ahead and just pick up one of these backspacers. And I'm gonna tell you why. 
Uh, if you checked out the install video, you might notice that there's always a little bit of a hiccup whenever you go to take out these body screws. And that's because Spyderco is awful when it comes to their barrel spacers. They're free spinning barrel spacers, which makes it very hard to take apart, especially considering that they do lock tight those screws. And so you always have to loosen up one, tighten it back, loosen up the other, tighten it back, and then kind of work your way back and forth to get the body screws out. There is none of that. This backspacer is phenomenal because it goes ahead and deletes those useless barrel spacers. And it also brings the backspacer into the lanyard tube. So it actually takes care of two problems. And the backspacer is kind of the MVP on this one because you screw the screws directly into the backspacer. So there's no free floating, free spinning barrel spacer there. And then also, you don't have to worry about fighting with that lanyard tube. I'm not sure if you saw in the install video, but that was a pain on this one. It did not want to come out. It was potentially the hardest, most difficult lanyard tube I've ever had to remove. And I even used this guy, which honestly, I probably couldn't have done it without it. But I had to really crank on this one to get that lanyard tube out. And now that the lanyard tube is part of the backspacer and it's not peened in, which is what uh, spider code does is they pin their the top ends of their lanyard tube to make it difficult if you didn't know taking your spider co apart does in fact void the warranty and the fine print some people say that they don't do that anymore that they don't care others say that they do um, you know what your mileage may vary choose your own storyline on that one now this backspacer is not specifically cheap it is an anodized titanium backspacer and that backspacer alone will set you back about $52. And if you want the matching hardware, the good news is, is that you can match all the way up to the hardware, including these pocket clip screws. You know, how often do you modify a knife and you go to, to install the pocket clip and then you realize that even if you have a black clip, they gave you silver screws or, you know, the clip screws don't really match the rest of your hardware. It's nice because the hardware kit, while it does cost $34, it does actually include pocket clip screws, which means that all of your hardware will in fact match. $52 for the backspacer, $34 for the hardware, all is well and good. We're going to move on to the star of the show and that is the handle skills. And I, I'm a firm believer that every build starts at the handle scales. These handle scales are titanium with an aluminum oxide blasting. The aluminum blasting is awesome because it makes it very texture-ish and it's very scratch resistant. And so grip on this is definitely not a problem. The deep engraving pattern is called the critter. So these are the critter titanium scales. Um, but Rock Scale does in fact have a couple different variations of this. They even do some limited runs with some limited anno. So they're not all aluminum blasted like this one. But I actually really, really enjoy it. I don't think that the camera is doing it any justice right now but they look fantastic guys and they fit really well in your hand you're not going to feel like you're going to drop it with all of this deep relief engraving being done there's a lot of opportunity for it to be uncomfortable but every edge has been knocked down every corner has been chamfered over it's extremely comfortable in the hand you do not lose any of that old school spider co ergo feel that you're used to but you do gain a whole lot more as far as grip, toughness, so on and so forth. Now, if you were to go ahead and buy all of these parts, including the knife, you would come up with a final price tag of... So as you can see, it is most definitely not cheap to make one of these things. However, and trust me when I say this, each and every one of these modifications... All of the rock scale stuff is 100% made and manufactured right here in the United States. The knife is also made right here in the United States in Golden, Colorado by Spider Co. That means that this build, just like our last build, is in fact 100% made right here in the U.S. We did not go ahead and do flitanium scales. One of the things that I love about rock scale is that they are a direct competitor with Flitanium, but Flitanium, in case you didn't know, while it is an American company, their products are actually manufactured overseas. 
Um, and to keep this build 100% American made really meant a lot to me because even though it's not cheap, you are paying for American manufacturing, American build quality, and it's something that we can definitely be proud of to keep this Spyderco PM2 all American made. Now, since we do have another backspacer and more screws, I feel like we should go ahead, for those of you who do not like the color purple, and we're going to replace the screws and we're gonna replace the backspacer with the plain titanium aluminum blasted backspacer and these silver titanium screws just to give you guys an idea of what it would look like if you were to go a more muted route if you wanted something a little bit less standout and a little bit more modest let's go ahead and show some photos of what that would look like if you were to go that route Now we're back and you can see that I went ahead and put it back to this configuration. And the reason for that is, is that this is actually the, the way that I want it. This is 100% how I would rock this knife. And so for that reason, that's why we are back in this configuration. Um, if you don't like it, if, if, you, if you disagree with it, I, I understand. But modifying a knife is incredibly personal and it changes the landscape when it comes to how the knife performs. For example, when I originally got this knife out of the box with the G10 handle scales, all the screws were cranked down and the action was kind of like what you would expect out of a Spyderco PM2 uh, that hasn't been broken in with washers. And that is to say that the action was sluggish and that it needed a lot of wrist action. Um, without having to do a whole lot, I cranked all these screws down. The lockup is perfect. There is absolutely nothing shaking or bouncing around in here and the moment i release that lock it guillotines shut i can't stop that motion i can't make it less drop shutty because all of these screws are as cranked down as they can go i can't make it go any farther and so for those reasons i actually really like this the way that this turned out is fantastic the balance is good the ergos are good the fit and finish on these scales and the hardware are awesome and I don't really have a whole lot of complaints. Guys, if this is the first Pimp My Knife video that you're watching, make sure to go ahead and click on the next video that pops up, which will be episode one on these dark matter fat carbon fiber handle scales build. Uh, this one I'm calling the Blood Money P uh, PM2. If this is, in fact, the second episode that you're watching, thank you for watching these in order. Let me know if you want to see more of these crazy knife build videos. If you have any suggestions for what you would have done differently, make sure to let me know in the comments section down below. Other than that, make sure to click on the video that pops up next.